Okay, so let's consider what we've established so far in terms of the flow of a program. We know we have two new blocks of code that we've established. One is called setup, and one is called draw. We write, we, write, we write code inside both of these blocks between the curly brackets. And the code here in setup happens once and only once, first at the beginning. And the code here in draw happens forever. It loops over and over again. Whenever it gets to the end, it loops right back at the beginning. Stuff happens here once, looping over and over again. So this is a very basic, simple model for controlling the flow of, of, of a program, how it executes the instructions in what order. So in this video, what I want to do is introduce one more layer on top of this, this idea of an event. Now, truth be told, a lot of programs don't have this animation loop at all. Everything is just a bunch of events, right? This event triggers this event, which triggers this event, then the program waits until this event happens. That is a, certainly um, a model for building uh, programs. A lot of web applications certainly work that way. But here we have an animation program that's always running continuously, but some events might interrupt this loop. So we finish through draw, an event executes, we go back into draw. Two obvious events that we can start with that are very simple to begin with are this idea of, a, of an interaction event, a mouse click or a key pressed. So for example, let's just say we want an event to be triggered when the mouse is pressed. We can now write another block of code, another function definition. This time it's called mouse pressed, right? We had set up, we have draw, now we're adding mouse pressed. We put our parentheses, we put our open curly bracket, and our closed curly bracket. This is an event. This we can consider an event, and it also only happens once. Now, I don't mean once in the course of the whole program, but it executes once at the moment of the event. Setup truly happens only once when the program first begins. Mouse rest might never occur. We could write the most amazing, sophisticated, beautiful code that we've ever written in our entire life, put it here, and if no one clicks the mouse, it will never happen. So this is something we have to realize. This only happens when the mouse is pressed. So the syntax remains the same as these blocks of code, the different, the, these, blocks of co these blocks of code, but the difference is the name of this method that we're implementing, this block of code is called mouse pressed. Okay, so let's go over and take a look at implementing this in our actual program. Here, if you recall, we have this continuous line drawing application where I'm just moving the mouse and it's drawing a line from previous mouse position to current mouse location. So what if I add this event, mouse pressed. Now one thing we should notice again is you've got to make sure you spell things correctly. If I wrote it as mouse pressed with a lowercase p, this is incorrect. Notice here that it doesn't turn blue, right? It doesn't turn blue because it's not a known word without that capitalization does matter. However, if I were to run this, I get no error. That's because, and the reason I just want to bring this up now, it's technically going, we're going to see later how you can make up all sorts of other blocks of code that you want. Right now we're trying to use specific ones. But so processing things, I'm just trying to make up a new one called mouse pressed with lowercase p, but it won't function correctly. We want to make sure we have that capital P, and we can see once we have that capital P, we've got the nice blue color, it's been recognized. So what's something I could put inside mouse pressed? I don't know, why don't we erase the background? We clear the background. Clear the background, set a background of grayscale value 50 again. Here, I'm moving the mouse around. Every time I click it, it erases what was there before. So we can see here is boom, an event, execute that code, go back into draw. Boom, an event, execute that code, go back into draw. So this is really powerful. This is, I mean, we, we have so few tools right now because we haven't gotten to some of the, the really fundamental pieces of defining our own variables and, and, and conditionals to change the course of how the information flows in the program. We just have these little pieces, but you can start to see that when you, you, can, you, can, have, you can have different things happen. We could also do something kind of kooky. For example, um, I could say um, void key pressed just to add another event, and I could say background, uh, you know, this, I said we'd do something kooky, and I'm like, yeah, this is really crazy, totally crazy, we're doing a different color in key press, but what can you do? Um, so we can say here, every time I click the mouse, it erases the background with gray. When I, when I click the mouse, uh, 
and it's very hard for you to see that um, when I when I press a key, then it does a green background. So you can see how this these are separate events: a key pressed, a mouse pressed. We're going to see later how do you do something when a specific key is pressed. There's also a mouse released event, right? When the mouse is pressed, an event is triggered. When it's released, another event is triggered. There's a mouse dragged event. You can look through the processing reference and you'll see there are a bunch of built-in events that processing can handle for you by implementing that block of code, that function definition, and then writing the code that you want to execute when that event is triggered inside there. Okay, so um, this was a nice little short uh, video. I'm looking at my list of things. I think this kind of covered what I meant to cover. So now we really have control over the whole flow of a program. And what I would suggest to you is, uh, you know, mostly the, I gave you the exercise previously, but try to animate stuff with what you have so far. Now you have some events to, try to have different things happen. Um, what happens, what, what can you do with these events if background is in draw? Not as much. Um, but tr you can try different configurations of this, come up with problems that you, that you, that you think you could solve. And in, in many of these, you might not be able to solve because you're going to need the concepts we're going to go over in the next set of videos. So in the next set of videos, right? What, 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 uh, just to remind you, one of the, the ways we introduced this idea of variation into the draw loop was through this idea of a keyword mouse x. I called it a built-in variable. It stands for a number, the, the, the x location of the actual mouse. What we're going to look at in the next video is how do we make up our own variables? I mean. If you think about it, we don't want to always just move things according to the mouse. We want, might want something to move autonomously. We need to store its position and, uh, 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 and uh, manipulate that position according to some mathematical formula. We're going to start to see how to do that um, in the next set of videos. I'm sure I missed something. I'll think of it. I'll write it on my list. And then later, I'll add a new video uh, that will be numbered with these numbers at the end that will fill in some of these details. That's kind of my plan right now because I already have some that I want to go back and add to the, the earlier videos. Okay. Um, Goodbye, and I'll talk to you later. I don't know. I need a better like, like sign off, you know, catchphrase. But I'll, I'll think of that.